Hi, welcome to my comparison of the Moog Mini Moog and the Moog Voyager. This is the new Mini Moog Model D, um, just recently arrived a couple of days ago. And this I've had for, for quite a few years now. Um, apologies for calling it Moog to anyone over the Atlantic. Um, I've tried calling it Moog, but I um, just can't seem to keep it up for long. It's our English ways. Okay. So. <clears throat> What's this, what's this video really aimed at? It's, it's more to, to look at the sort of raw sounds of what you can get from the Mini Moog and what you can get from the Voyager. Both three oscillators, slightly different um, ways the oscillators work. I'll explain that in a minute. Different filters, all those, obviously it's a, it's a Moog filter. This has got two filters in it. Um, that can be in series or I think in parallel, depending on which configuration you use. This has just got the single um, classic Mini Moog filter in it. This has got, um, yeah, this can be one pole, two pole, three pole, or four pole on either. Uh, and this is just four poles straight off. So um, I think what I'll do first off is just talk through the oscillator section um, and, uh, and then through maybe some FM and then uh, look at the filters in more detail. Um, but the first thing before I even start this is to note um, that I'm not going to be able to match up the sounds like I've been doing on some of my other uh, videos. And that's because this only goes up to 12k, this filter. This filter, according to the manual, goes with 35 kilohertz, which means it's much brighter. So. so there we have two square waves. Is that exactly on square? Yeah. Instant difference there. I'm getting a lot higher volumes coming out of this than I'm getting this. This is a, this is on a almost full. This is on down at two. Wonder if I change the uh, output to the low, and that's very quiet. So uh, something else to look at, I suppose. Put that back into the high. Put it on around. I think. Can hear when it gets to around here it starts to overdrive so that's the maximum on that one on let's have a listen to this you hear that start to overdrive in there have another listen So similar in sound, but except for that filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this filter down so it matches that one a bit so that we can get a... But just bear in mind for all this, I'll, I'll knock that up and down so you can hear the difference. So on the top end there, you can hear that's a similar amount of buzziness. Obviously, so I can take that all the way up to much more buzzy, much more buzzy. Um, but I think listening in, listen to the bass on that. That sounds boomier. And I found this a lot. I found that this sounds sort of boomier and more subby, but this sounds more... Um, solid. So if there were shapes, this would be a square and this would be a sort of circle. If that makes sense to anyone. Okay, so got them sound sounding roughly alike. So this has got the three oscillators that go from 32 foot to one foot. These go from 32 to two, um, but they also have a low. Um, so well, it's interesting that we still use pipe organ pipe size conventions for our um for our octaves right so this has got six distinct waveforms as you'll all probably know so it's got the um triangle this is like a bit like a saw to sort of triangle stroke um stroke saw sawtooth and three pulse widths there um I'll show these on an oscilloscope on Logic, actually. So as I play through these um, on the video, I'll hopefully have 
some um, representations of the waveform so you can see the differences. Main difference really is on the sawtooth, um, it's sort of like an inverse phase, not the sawtooth, the, the saw is like an inverse sort of uh, an inverse saw on this compared to this, but you can change the phase of it okay um, by 180 degrees. The sawtooth is slightly different in that one sort of goes up and drops among goes up and then squares up. I'll show you, you'll, you'll see in the, in the graphics. So let's start off going through the various waveforms in this. So this is continual from the, um, this is the, the, the triangle, and it adds a bit of sawtooth, more, 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 until we're at sawtooth. Then we start adding some pulse. So we're at square. And to a, a thin pulse. So let's go back down. And obviously, because you can do this, you can modulate that, something this can't do. So let's go back down to these. Really need headphones on for this, because if you're listening through um, your phone or a laptop speakers, I don't think you can hear anything. Buzzy at, sub here. Turn that up. Bring it down. Checking my um, my contours here on my envelopes. Just leave that. Just leave them both right up. Nice, those sort of, I think this sounds a little bit more subby. This one sounds clickier. I don't know if you can hear that at the start of the notes. Maybe to do the waveform trigger, and actually this is, um, I think this is single, this can be multi, you can go in and change that. At the minute this is set on low trigger, the same as this, this is constantly on low trigger. go in and change that on this so it's last note priority which I normally have because I'm quite a sloppy player and that was the first thing I noticed when I got this and started playing I thought oh I sound rubbish and that was because it's low note priority so you've got to be a little bit more staccato when you're playing you can't be you can't be doing that make sure you take your low note off before you press the, the high one okay let's move on then to the to the sawtooth is it saw shark's tooth sort of wave <laughs> Turn that up so we can actually hear it. So buzzier, let's knock that down. I think I've read some places that the, the oscillators sound different. I don't think you can see what the oscillators sound or hear what the oscillators sound like compared to the mini moog without being able to take the take them out of the 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 the, the out of the filters you can do that with this actually through the, through the there's a pre-filter out i uh, can't do that on this i don't think you can anyway no interesting that this one's now quieter well say i say quieter it's in relative to what it was before This one, boomier, buzzier. Let's move on to the sawtooth. So again, sawtooth. Oh, 
fuck that up again. Just to keep with the theme. Again, buzz, yeah. So you can really get those nice... Having said all this, I mean, I know I'm going on about it. When I had, before I got this, that never bothered me. And you read things, people say, oh, the Voyager doesn't sound anything like the Mini Moog. It's a completely different instrument. They're quite right. <laughs> um, okay, back now to the, well, up to the pulse. The, the These look really, really similar actually on the oscilloscope. Another thing that's almost, almost exact. Except when you do that. <laughs> but as I say, never noticed before. But you know, you, I could be, I could have been doing stuff in a, in a mix and thought it's not quite got the bite. I can't remember. You get used to the sound of the synth, don't you? Right, let's move on to the smaller pulses. Again, lots more hiss, hiss, sizzle on that. Put that back up again. Miles apart. And then on to the thinnest pulse. Differences again there. So that's, let's just go through this once more. Once more through these, I'll turn that up so you can hear it properly. Interestingly, when I did look at these um, through the oscilloscope, when I had the, the, the square wave on, this seemed to be, the amplitude seemed to be sort of, um, <clears throat> just sort of modulating slightly, whereas these were bang on steady. And I wonder if that adds to the sound. Although when I did it again, it seemed to be perfect. And it may just be that I'd had slightly different settings on the oscilloscope and it was, it was um, accounting for that itself. 